The man was cooking and the pan instantly fell to the floor. In the corner, the woman is holding up a knife and shivering. She is a soldier who has just come off the battlefield and once suffered from PTSD after being bombed and buried alive for five minutes. But you would never guess that this thin woman was a sharpshooter on the Soviet battlefield. In 10 months, she killed 309 men and became a nightmare for the Germans. She was Mira. In 1937, Mira was admitted to the university with the first grade, and she excitedly told her father the happy news. But the officer's father was very disdainful about it. He did not expect his daughter to be very talented in shooting. At school, Mira competed with the boys in shooting. It was the first time she touched the barrel of a gun, and when her hand touched the gun she instantly got on top. One shot after another. Forty-seven out of fifty rings, shocked the military forces, simply talented ah, immediately provide free shooting training. A few years later, Mira came to Odessa to meet a doctor named Boris, they fell in love at first sight, and soon met the parents. At the dinner table, Boris proposed to Mira with a ring in his hand, but Mira hesitated. That day, also a special day, the German army launched a war against the Soviet Union, Mira decided to go to war. But this was opposed by her fiancé, who was worried about Mira and wanted her to give up. She then immediately opened her training. The next day, she was dragged out by the officer because her buttocks were too high when she was prostrating. The officer thought the girls were too petulant, so the girls' dolls, clothes, and shoes were taken away and burned in a fire. He told the girls that there were no men or women on the battlefield, only soldiers, and that everyone needed to be sharpened to become a qualified soldier. Day after day, rolling in the mud, running in the rain, soon came the opportunity to go to war. Who knew that the first battle, the German army used armored tanks. Armor is exceptionally strong. Want to break through only two ways. One is to throw grenades at close range. The second is to break through the tank observation hole with armor-breaking bullets and then two shots at the driver. Mira, of course, chose the latter. She loaded the armor-breaking rounds, rolled through the trench, adjusted her position, and the bullet was fired, hitting the observation hole squarely. At that moment a shell was dropped, and the violent boom caused Myra's ears to go temporarily deaf. It was at this moment that she truly realized the cruelty of war. Mira struggled to get up and fired two shots. The tank finally stopped and a large number of German troops appeared in front of her. Mira held her breath, but the moment she pulled the trigger she hesitated. The obstacles on the grass field kept moving. The instructor asked the soldiers on the sidelines to report the changes on the battlefield. Some said the rocks disappeared. Others said the haystack moved three meters. Only one girl got it right. While doing the dodging training, the other hidden people were discovered by the instructor. Only the girl. How did her outstanding talent play out on the battlefield? Mira went to battle for the first time, and she hesitated in the face of the enemy. The next second, her comrade on her right was unfortunately shot. Mira froze. She looked back at her comrade and secretly made up her mind. Mira gathered her breath and concentrated. Mercy to the enemy is cruelty to oneself, Mira understood this truth. For her outstanding performance, she was awarded by her superiors with a semi-automatic rifle. After that, Mira was even more courageous, sweeping hundreds of enemies in a row. Her name resounded on the battlefield. That day the captain told her that if she adjusted her position well, she could kill three enemies in one breath. In the next battle, she was alone and found a good position. The captain found out and grabbed her back to the trench. Mira didn't say anything just giggled at the captain. It turns out that in the course of time, Mira had already fallen in love with the captain, but the captain did not accept her affection. It was not that he was not in love, but in a day of gunfire, no one could say which would come first, tomorrow or death. Mira was angry, who knew that Myra's words were immediately fulfilled. The captain struggled to get up and dug his hands into the earth for several minutes before he could dig Mira out of it. Deprived of oxygen for several minutes, she was carried urgently to the rear, where the doctor who treated her was actually Boris. 
The trauma was so severe that Mira could not heal for a long time and she insisted on returning to the battlefield. Boris was so distressed by her that he did not want her to go to war. The certificate of recovery was delayed again and again until the frontline soldiers retreated and Mira excitedly wanted to meet the captain, but all she waited for was the captain's gun. Mira was in pain. She wanted to carry on the captain's legacy and once again pleaded with Boris. Understanding Mila's determination, Boris signed the healing letter. Mira kisses Boris gratefully. And then she steps onto her gun and runs off to war again. The woman with the gun is having her picture taken, having just survived a bombing raid. The unyielding warrior woman braced herself and stood up for the photo. The photo contains so much heartache and suffering that upon returning to the battlefield Mira was paired with a new partner. Their mission was to stay behind and sweep out enemy snipers, but at this point Myra's hatred washed over her because of the death of her captain. When aiming at the enemy soldier, venting her anger, aiming at his leg, aiming at his arm. The partner Leo could not stand to see, a shot painfully resolved the other side. Mira dissatisfied, Leo advised to, war does not only include death, but also live. If everyone is like Mira sacrificed a companion to torture the enemy, then what is the difference with fascism? Mira understood, she began to work honestly, and the two cleared countless obstacles behind the troops day and night. In the winter snow, they were lying on their backs all day long, and after nightfall, they snuggled up and roasted each other. In these days, the friendship gradually sublimated. Soon the new year arrives, and the troops hold a celebration also to celebrate the second time to drive the enemy out of the country. In the lively atmosphere, the two do not think about tomorrow and death, just want to grasp the present, but the accident happened soon after. Leo accidentally stepped on a fuse while on a mission, which was a chain mine formation, and they had to run as hard as they could, but they didn't run out after all. In the nick of time, Leo lunged out and shielded Mira underneath him. Mira struggled to get up and carried Leo on her back, step by step to the camp, but in the end, Leo, who was blown up and bloodied, died. Mira was so grief-stricken that the man she loved was once again gone from her. When she woke up again, she was in a hospital bed, her back bruised and battered. The doctor who treated her was still Boris. A few days later, the military comes and asks Mira to fight again. Rumor has it that the Soviet marksman has been killed and they want to take a picture of Mira to inspire people. But after a series of blows, Mira no longer wanted to go into battle. The German ace sniper challenged Mira to a fight, and she stepped up again for the sake of national honor. The two snipers fought for several days and nights in the field, physically and mentally exhausted, with blood seeping from her back again. They both shot at the same time. And they both hit each other. But Mira is more skilled than the other, and kills her opponent directly. She cleans his papers, but finds a wedding photo in the man's arms. Mira remembered her lover and burst into tears. She gently closed the man's eyes. After that, Mira never go to war again, but the war would not stop. And now that it had reached its end, Boris said he had secured tickets for Mira, which was very rare at that time when warships were scarce. The two walked through the crowds, and as the dawn broke, they walked down the dock nostalgically thinking about the past. If only Mira hadn't gone to war in the first place, maybe their children would have been able to walk. After putting Mira on the ship, Boris stopped on the shore. It turned out that the military intended to abandon Mira, but Boris gave his ticket to his beloved, and he wanted to keep her alive. Boris had never been afraid of war, he just didn't think it was necessary. If it was necessary, he would die openly. The historical battle for Sevastopol was so tragic that only 3,000 people survived. The remaining 80,000 inhabitants and soldiers continued to resist the enemy. Mira, who was awarded the title of Hero of the Soviet Union, said that she was not great, but those who died were the real heroes.